Hello, thank you for joining us today. My name is Gigi Launchbaugh. I am at the Makerspace at Fort Hayes State University. Today we're going to be talking to you about making payload boxes for high altitude balloons. A very good starting point for making your payload box is a styrofoam cooler. Uh, we like to use the ones that are sized to fit in shipping boxes. The ones we're going to be using for this project are about 12 inches by 12 inches by 6 inches. The payload box will hold whatever instruments we want to launch with the balloon. Typically, we include a Vermeer lab quest with instruments attached, such as temperature probe, radiation sensor, uh, air pressure sensor. I have 3D printed a small plastic cover for the lab quest to help protect it from any damage during the flight. Using the Makerspace's resources here on campus, we have 3D modeled and then 3D printed several different pieces to hold the sensors securely inside the payload box. This, for instance, holds a camera securely. It's important because if they shake around, they can be damaged during the flight. And there can be some turbulence that shakes the box fairly hard. So here you can see how we are using the 3D printed brackets to mount the sensors and the cameras inside the box. You can mount the bracket to the box in different ways. The easiest way is to use zip ties. You can also glue them or tape them, or a mixture of all of the above. These plastic brackets are ideal because they are very low weight, and weight is something you always need to be in consideration of in your payload boxes. When you are positioning the instruments and cameras inside your payload box, you need to take into account uh, how you will access them both so you can plug them in to charge the batteries and so you can uh, pull the data off of them either by taking out the data card or attaching them to a computer. So you may need to move your parts around a few times to find a good fit. In this case I have also put some auxiliary battery packs in there. Here you can see some of the labeling that I'm starting to put on the outside of the box. Good labeling is important. You need to make sure you have your contact information clearly shown on both the inside and the outside of the box. This will be needed if the payload is lost and you are not able to find it. Uh, we have had several payloads that have been recovered even months later uh, when a farmer found the box in his field. So it's important to make sure that it's well labeled so they can contact you if that happens. For similar reasons, I like to put high visibility bright orange or yellow vinyl on the outside along with reflective aluminum tape. I made all these vinyl decals with the vinyl cutter we have here in the Fort Hayes State Maker Space. When you have your payload all securely fastened into the payload box and all the labeling that you are going to put on the box done, the last thing we're going to do is make a harness so that we can attach the payload box to the balloons and the parachute. I have sewn these harnesses out of one inch webbing with D-rings sewn in this provides a secure mounting point and makes it easy to open and close the box. When you are designing your box and your harness, make sure that your harness does not interfere with any of the instruments in the box. For instance, you don't want a harness strap to go directly over the lens of your camera. In addition to a payload containing instruments, we always launch a communications payload. This contains a radio and a GPS tracker. Both of these can be used to track the payload during its flight, 
tracker.habhub.org and aprs.fi allow you to track the radio and findmespot.com is the company's website that allows us to track our GPS tracker. Now that we have our payloads assembled, we can go ahead and get ready for a launch. You can launch several payloads with one balloon. We have done up to four or five at once. It all just depends on the weight capacity. So we will inflate our helium balloons and attach the payloads below them. They'll be launched. You can see the balloon taking off there. The balloon will typically go up to around 80,000 feet. Here are some of the pictures that we've taken in flight using our GoPro cameras. If the sky is clear, you can get some very nice photos. After the balloon reaches its maximum height, the balloon will pop due to the lower air pressure. After this happens, the parachute will allow the payload to come down to the ground safely. It typically takes about half an hour for the payload to reach the ground once the balloon pops. Now all this time we are tracking the payload with our apps. Using these we can usually drive right to where it has landed and find it easily. The GPS is usually accurate to just within maybe 10 feet of where it says it will be. Once we have got the GPS coordinates, we will drive out to the location and then walk until we can find it. Sometimes it lands in a field or a pasture. Usually there's not too much difficulty in retrieving the payload. Once we have retrieved the payload, we will get our information off of it. We can pull the data off of the lab quests and then we can take the footage off of our cameras. Thank you for joining me for this short introduction to how we make our high altitude balloon payloads. We hope you will join us at the Fort Hayes State Makerspace for many more projects coming up in the future.